to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. So we're back at it with TB500. Some of you like the BPC-157 fact or fiction video, and I really mean like some of you, probably like four to seven of you. So today we're going to do it again with its co-pilot in the Wolverine stack. Don't forget we've done full videos dissecting the peptide, which can be found on the channel, so this isn't the end-all be-all about it, but we can probably dig up some interesting pertinent points. Let's start with a big misconception as our first prompt, or is it? The prompt is TB500 is the same as TB4, and that is false. And when you try to do your own research about the peptide, it's easy to get confused. I admit I did myself way back when. Because not only do some sites use the terms interchangeably, but some sources also draw conclusions about TB500 about the much more researched compound that is TB4. But let it be known they are, in fact, different. Thymosin beta-4, TB4, is a 43 amino acid peptide. TB5 500 is a 7 amino acid fragment of that structure, in particular of amino acids 17 to 23. Interestingly, different fragments of TB4 have been investigated, given the idea that different pieces of its structure correlate to different outcomes. For instance, while amino acids 1 to 15 are thought to inhibit apoptotic activity or prevent programmed cell death, fragment 17 to 23, i.e. TB500, is thought to strongly favor angiogenesis and growth of hair follicles. So it's more adequately named as TB4 fragment or thymosin beta 4 fragment 17 to 23, something of that nature. Things to keep in mind when conducting your own investigation. Next, TB500 has not been involved in any clinical trials. True or false? So that's true. Although the larger compound TB4 has been researched in a clinical setting and does have some completed phase 2 trials, TB500 hasn't been looked at in this context. Hence the lack of clarity we've talked about previously and the ambiguity in our ability to determine what of this research, if any, is translational. And it's generally safest practice to not dive headfirst into a fragmented compound based off the findings of its progenitor due to differences in pharmacokinetic properties like life and potency amongst other factors. We've discussed before in an unconvincingly conducted quote-unquote study done by a human optimization clinic that looked at self-reported benefits in patients paying to receive BPC-157 with or without TB4, but a true well-crafted clinical study has yet to be done and published. Next is that TB500 works the same way as BPC-157. This is neither really fact nor fiction, but a, well, mildly accurate, based off of what we know idea, which is of course very little. They are different compounds derived from different products. While BPC-157 was isolated from human gastric acid, TB500, as we said, is a chip off of TB4, which was initially found in the thymus, but discovered to be more ubiquitous. And given the paucity of research on TB500, when compared to TB4, before. We know a lot more about the larger compound than its popular fragment. And on top of that, they do show some overlapping features, like a likely ability to increase VEGF, or vascular endothelial growth factor, which would contribute to increased formation of new blood vessels, also known as angiogenesis. Now, both BPC-157 and TB4 are also touted to affect presence of inflammatory cytokines and influence recruitment of molecules involved in recovery as well. However, the exact theorized biochemical pathways involved are not completely described and too dense for this video and my vocabulary. However, some characteristics more specific to TB4 that may be relevant to TB500 are anti-apoptotic properties, so prevention of program cell death, and interestingly as well, TB4 is considered a possible marker of inflammation in patients with dysregulated immune response. So we can say these are not the same peptides, don't operate the same way. However, there are likely overlapping features, but they are in fact distinct and important to note that we know a lot more about TB4 than we do with TB500. By the way, if you made it this far, hit that subscribe button if you can muster up the energy or don't, it's all good. A year ago, I couldn't imagine 5,000 people would be interested in the research behind peptides, but it's been a ton of fun to keep these videos going and talking with you all. Subscribe or don't, you the best. All right, so next prompt. 
TP500 doesn't affect growth hormone. So I figured I'd include this one in because people are highly interested in the growth hormone releasing peptides and the GH, RH analogs, all that fun stuff. And BPC157 on top of that is touted to affect growth hormone receptor expression. And this doesn't seem to be a feature of TB500, although it is thought to influence growth of vasculature and formation of new avenues of blood flow, which is why I always throw in a warning in that although these sorts of characteristics are good for wound recovery, yes, they also create an environment more susceptible to cancer thriving and tumor growth. And the idea that cancer spread is mediated by VEGF, or vascular endothelial growth factor, which TB4 and BPC157 are known to upregulate, it's no stranger to science. And the research behind TB4 and cancer is a bit controversial. Some research suspects that it may be regulatory and possibly synergistic with certain chemotherapeutic drugs, while others highlight it may promote cancerous spread. Which leads me to the final Buzz Killington prompt in that TB500 is risk-free, which obviously it's not. Nothing is. We have no faced clinical research on TB500, and TB4 as a synthetic injectable has only made its way through phase 2 trials. Concerns we have, notwithstanding buying gray marketed products that could be assembled by a bathtub scientist, include the already discussed concerns for creating a more pro-cancerous physiologic environment, as TB500 is thought to be the angiogenic fragment, and on top of that, TB4 has been extensively noted as anti-apoptotic, or preventing programmed cell death, which is oftentimes a healthy regulatory property in controlling unwanted cellular proliferation. Point being, it's important to emphasize that any peptide not extensively studied in clinical trials carries inherent risks, and potential side effects or long-term impacts are not well understood, which is pretty clear with a lot of these things. Regardless, thank you for the time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button. If you're looking for a way to further support the channel, the link to the Patreon will be in the description below. We've got just plenty of random subscriber requested videos in there, and it's a fun time. I hope you have a great day. All in all, you take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based Pull up a chair, let's get this straight Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy